We're going to take a look at ActiveX. Now, ActiveX is in many ways a lot more complicated and convoluted than the NPAPI side, uh, primarily because it uses COM, and COM is a fairly complex system. Uh, COM was kind of designed to be all things to all systems, and as such, it's a lot more complicated to implement. But, where on the NPAPI side, the NPAPI plugin module was essentially the, the core system, on ActiveX core, we start with the fpcontrol.h control. I'm going to take a look at this up here, and uh, you'll see that there are quite a few public COM interfaces that we're going to start using. The first one is the com, CCOM object root, um, where we specify that our thread model. Basically, we use the multi-thread model just in case the um, we need the atomicity of the reference counting. Um, in our case, we could probably get away without doing that, though, because we're pretty careful to only use one thread. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on the specifics of how to implement the COM, but I will touch on a few specific things that Firebreath is doing, one of which is this JS API I dispatch. Um, and this is basically a common base class that both the FB control, ActiveX control, and also the um, com JavaScript object that you can see referenced over here, both inherit from, and that's what provides the layer of interface with the uh, 2JS API. Unlike NPAPI, which creates a plugin instance and passes around an NPP pointer that has a you know private data structure in it, um, in Internet Explorer in ActiveX, we basically end up with just a COM control, and that COM control has supports the iDispatch or iDispatch EX interface. And when JavaScript calls are made, they are made through that interface. So let's. All right, we're going to actually take a second and look up um, iDispatch EX. So that you can see where I get the where I find the documentation for this. Um, I dispatch EX. We've got some some decent documentation here. We're going to look at the methods specifically, and you'll see that here are the members that we can deal with. This is similar to remove property. Uh, this is similar. Well, both of these are really. Uh, ActiveX uses what's called the dispatch ID, rather than using. Uh, well, in, in some ways, it's similar to a. Uh, to the NP identifier on the NP API side. However, the disp ID is actually provided by the ActiveX component. Um, so we keep our own map, uh, our own disp ID map that maps all of the member poss possible member names to a dispatch ID. And when a call is wanted to be made on the iDispatch, then you call git disp ID and you give it the, the name and it returns the dispatch ID that you want. Um, you can also then, uh, using a get dispatch ID, you can call get member name, uh, get member properties, which tells you things about like read only or not, namespace parent, which we don't use, get next disp ID, which is used to enumerate all the properties. It's kind of used to, to produce a similar thing to NPN uh, enumerate. And then evo invoke EX is used to invoke a function, as you would expect. It's also used to get or set a property, though. Um, so this is where the basic documentation is. Now, as if you're familiar with COM, you'll know that since there's an iDispatch EX, there is an also a iDispatch. Um, and we support, well, it's in order to support iDispatch EX, you have to support iDispatch as well. Um, so we're going to take a quick look just on uh, at what iDispatch itself is. It's basically the same interface, except it's a lot simplified. It doesn't support uh, case-sensitive names, and the interfaces aren't quite as easy to use. For example, get IDs of names instead of get disp ID. You basically pass in an array of names, and it will return an array of the dispatch IDs. So we do support both, but we kind of try to lean more towards the 
use it, supporting the iDispatch EX and then just forwarding the methods as needed from iDispatch. Turning back way back to the code, um, that'll show you. So that's what JSAPI iDispatch EX is, and that's where the JSAPI implementation is, um, or the JSAPI wrapper for the core object. Now, unlike NPAPI, we can't use the same the same thing for the root object and for any additional objects that we return. It's going to have to make a difference there. And we'll cover that a little bit more later. Okay, so looking through some of the methods, we have set ready, which is our own uh, our, our own construct, and set, set window. Some of these things, I think it'll be easier if I scroll down here and we start looking at uh, at specific functions. Now one thing you'll notice, this is a template class. The reason that this is a template class is that ActiveX does not truly support multiple MIME types the way that Firefox does. With Firefox, uh, part of the NPP new call, uh, and if you go back and look at those video tutorials, you'll see this, uh, it passes the MIME type that this was instantiated with. And so an NPAPI plugin basically is able to then just say, okay, these are the MIME types I support, and as long as one of those MIME types is in the object tag, it's going to work. However, on iDispatch, you're stuck with a class ID. Now, if you're, you, if you're already familiar with Firebreath, you'll know that we still use a MIME type on IE, on ActiveX. And you may be wondering how that is that it's just using class ID. Well, one of the things that we install in the registry map is we actually install a map to this MIME type goes to this class ID. And so in order to support multiple MIME types, we have to have multiple class IDs. And so if you've looked at the syntax, uh, for how you actually add multiple MIME types to a Firebreath plugin, one of the things that you have to do is you have to create multiple class IDs and then it's going to register each one. Well, at least with ATL, there may be a better way of doing this, but I haven't figured it out and I haven't really taken a lot of time on it because this works. So at least with ATL, you, you can basically map one, one COM object to one class ID. And so what we do we create a templated com object, and this first template parameter is the GUID, the class ID. Uh, the second one is the MIME type. And so that way, when we create it, we're actually, uh, when we instantiate something by the class ID, it instantiates the object that's registered with ATL as being the correct one for that, which happens to be <laughs> the object that already has been specialized with the MIME type. So we already know the MIME type when we're instantiated. Uh, it's a little different from NPAPI, but it, as it turns out, it works quite well. Now, this onDraw uh, method here is the this is a, a function of the windowless control. Uh, so, if we're using I, the ActiveX control in windowless mode, onDraw is going to call get called anytime the browser needs us to to draw. Um, if you're not familiar with the difference between a windowed plugin and a windowless plugin, you may want to look that up because uh, it's it's good to understand. Um, invalidate window is is just a utility function that's used to um, to invalidate the rect, and it distinguishes between whether we are on. Actually, I guess w w if we are windowed, then we don't need to do anything with invalidate window. If we are windowless, then we need to do this, and uh, and this is used to make sure that that takes place on the main thread. Because again, if we start calling com methods from alternate threads, we have to set up a whole bunch of additional stuff to keep track of that. And so since we can't do that with NPAPI anyway, it's easier to just set up the paradigm where we always call things on the main thread. So we've got invalidate window. Supported object safety is basically just, uh, it's kind of, uh, provides some security settings. It's um, You can look through and at uh, all the different interfaces and figure out which which of these functions goes to what interface? I believe that's the I object safety interface. Uh, set site and set client site. These two are really important to understand um, because there's not a ton of difference between them, but there is a difference. Um, if you're really familiar with ActiveX controls, you'll know that in the browser, uh, which is really the only way of using them that I pay much attention to, in the browser when you use a, an ActiveX control, you can either put it in an object or embed tag, uh, or you can put it 
in JavaScript. You can use new ActiveX control and pass in the kind of a, a, a simplified name. Well, Firebreath supports that as well. But the interesting thing is that when you instantiate it from JavaScript, you don't have an object tag or an element that you're tied to. Instead, what you have is you just have a JavaScript object. And so it actually instantiates it slightly differently too. So set site is called, I believe I'm, I'm getting this straight, set site is called when you instantiate it from JavaScript and set client site is called when you're actually embedding it in the page. Because when you call set site, you're not going to have any kind of window. And so that's going to be a difference. Um, however, I think we're actually going to end up creating a window. It's just going to be a hidden window. But uh, these are kind of details that maybe should be worked out still. Although, but you see here, there will be no window this time. Um, so we call client sets site set, and in this case, we call set ready immediately. In this case, we do not. The reason why is there's some additional steps that are going to happen if it's instantiated inside a inside the DOM. Um, so set objects rects is basically called any time the the window resizes, although that's a little bit unstable as well. There there's still some some things that need to be improved with the way that Firefox works with windowless controls. Windowless controls are not really well understood or documented, unfortunately. Um, but we're making some progress, and, and it is being successfully used by several different plugins, including a couple of them that I'm working on. So they do work. In place activate, and down here in place deactivate. So in place activate is one of those things that's never going to get called if the um, if the plugin is instantiated from JavaScript and not in the DOM because this is a UI interface uh, activate. In place activate is called when the object has been placed and it's ready to it's it's there and it's ready to be activated and start drawing. So in in place activate first we call the the default implementation that ATL provides. Uh, we have this resume and then down here you'll see that we have a suspend that we call on the browser host. Now one kind of strange thing about IE is if we're holding on to iDispatch objects from the browser when in place deactivate is called then it will never actually close, call close and shut down our plugin and we'll end up with a memory leak and you know generally people frustrated all over the place. So we created this suspend and resume, which basically suspend releases all held iDispatch objects. The unfortunate side effect of that is if there are any um, event handlers that we're holding on to, those will get released. Now the only time the in-place deactivate gets called other than plugin shutdown that I'm aware of is if it is in the DOM and you move it into a different place in the DOM or if you create it out of the DOM and then move it in. So it's not usually a big issue, um, but, uh, but it is still something to be aware of if you're, if you're doing that. Um, and so basically you can see here we're, we're detecting if, if in-place activate has been called again, but we have a plugin window win, or the GUI is disabled, um, then we're going to just ignore it. Otherwise, we check if it's windowless or windowed. And if it's windowless, we're going to create plugin windowless. Call that on the on the factory instance. So, if you want, you can customize the the windowless uh, the plugin window windowless object. Um, we set up the invalidate callback, and we get things going. Uh, otherwise, it's a little bit simpler. We're just going to create our window and uh, and set it. When we call set window, this is when the activate um, this is when the act uh, the attached event is going to be fired. And similarly, uh, in in place deactivate, when we call clear window, this is when detached event is going to be called. So this is basically our UI. Um, this is this is how things are going to be are set up with the, the drawing.